Hey, it's Dinosaur George from DinosaurGeorge.com. If you've got questions about dinosaurs or anything to do with paleontology, uh, go to my website, uh, DinosaurGeorge.com, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, and I'll try my best to answer them. Okay, Arthur from Sao Paulo writes and says, Hey, Dinosaur George, it's me again. Hi, Arthur. It's good to hear from you again. He says, I have many questions about dinosaurs, but he'd like to ask me these two. First, he wants to know who was the biggest dinosaur of all time. Uh, that's kind of a tough one, Arthur, and the reason why is because there's been a couple of discoveries of really big sauropods, the big long-necked dinosaurs. They obviously were the biggest kinds of dinosaurs. But there's been uh, some discoveries, one of a dinosaur named Sauroposeidon, which appears to be gigantic, and another of a big dinosaur, I think found in India, I believe. Uh, its name was Gruhaptiosaurus. It appears that these two dinosaurs may be gigantic, but the problem is that the evidence right now is so, um, so small, uh, so limited, that uh, it's really difficult to, to know just how big they were. So for now, the biggest dinosaur that I'm aware of is a dinosaur named Argentinosaurus. It came from down in South America near Argentina, of course. Um, it appears to be big. I think it's about 120 feet long and weighs around 220,000 pounds. It is gigantic compared to pretty much everything else. There were some other big ones. There's Seismosaurus and there's, uh, who else, uh, Ultrasaurus. Those are both big dinosaurs as well, but to my knowledge, uh, the biggest right now is Argentinosaurus. His other question is, can you tell me what the speed of a Tyrannosaurus was? Well, here's the problem with estimating the speed of Tyrannosaurus. Uh, one of the best ways to estimate speed is to find a track site where we have the ability to measure the distance between the footsteps and that at least tells us how fast that dinosaur was walking, usually in track sites, the good ones uh, he was walking. But that at least gives us uh, something to base everything else off of because uh, we can estimate stride length and that kind of stuff. The problem is that there's no multiple track sites of Tyrannosaur footprints and so we just don't have any way of measuring that. Um, so that leaves us with having to estimate its speed based on the length of its legs and comparing the upper leg to the lower leg. Uh, again, we don't know how accurate that is. It's, it at least gives us some scientific basis. My best guess is Tyrannosaurus probably could run in the high 20s, maybe even up into the 30, maybe 32 miles an hour, but he certainly couldn't maintain that speed for an extended time. I think he was quick out of the gate, so to speak, um, or if you're a track star, he's quick out of the blocks. He took off pretty quick, he picked up speed pretty quickly, but he couldn't maintain it very long. So if he was gonna chase you, he would only chase you a certain distance. Whatever his speed is, in my best estimate, Arthur, he was faster than I think many paleontologists give him credit for. Okay, um, Michael from Cliffside Park, New Jersey. Is it true that Tyrannosaurus could only run in a straight line, unable to change directions during rapid locomotion? A very well-written question, Michael, that's very good. Um, I don't think so. I think Tyrannosaurus was a little more agile, again, than, than we give credit for. Sometimes we look at animals and we simply have a bias that because it's big, we assume then that equates to clumsy or slow. Um, I had to tell you this, I had the opportunity one time to meet a defensive lineman from uh, uh, the Dallas Cowboys. <clears throat> Excuse me. I stood next to that man and I couldn't believe any human could be as big as he was. But you watch him on the field and the guy is fast and quick and agile. Well, you can kind of magnify that to the size of a Tyrannosaur and recognize that he's running on two legs, which gives him an advantage, but he also has that enormous tail, which is perfectly suited to act as a counterbalance, and that means he has the ability to change direction quickly. Uh, look at the animal kingdom today. A cheetah has the longest tail of any cat, a longest tail to body size of any cat. The reason for that is that tail acts as a counterbalance when he's changing directions quickly. And Tyrannosaurus' tail is not a wiggly tail like a crocodile tail. It was actually held stiff and rigid because of a bunch of little short bony rods that interconnected each vertebra. And what that did is it ensured that that tail remained stiff, like a balancing pole. All those things combined to me tells me that this dinosaur had the ability to change directions very quickly. There's one last piece of evidence that I think absolutely solidifies the concept that he could maneuver quickly on the run. Uh, cat scanning. They cat scanned his inner ear and discovered that Tyrannosaurus rex's inner ear is very well suited to be able to maintain his head at a level position as he's running, which means he could change his head position quickly without being disoriented. Well, that's the mark of something that is needing to maintain 
that orientation at a high rate of speed. If you're standing perfectly still, there's no reason for you to be moving your head like this. That doesn't make any sense. But when you're chasing something and you're having to maneuver through trees and around bushes and over rocks, and that is the mark to me of a predator who has the ability to adapt, uh, to change directions rather quickly. So that's my, my opinion. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nathan from Manchester, England writes and says, would Utah Raptor hunt in packs or hunt alone because it was so big? Uh, Nathan, good, good question. Um, <clears throat> any predator has a much greater chance of catching prey if it's working in unison with another member of its family. Uh, wolves are a perfect example, coyotes are an example of that, lions are a really good example. They're much more effective at catching prey more often. Now Utah Raptor, your point is well taken, he was big enough to certainly handle his own and hunt by himself, so I think he did um, if, if, he, uh, if he wanted to, but I still think he would be much more effective if he hunted with a group. So in my opinion, I would guess that probably 80% of the time, Utah Raptors hunted in packs. I don't think they were huge packs, maybe three, four, five, six in a group. Uh, and maybe 20% of the time, he simply uh, it on its own uh, and, and uh, didn't rely on other pack members to help it catch prey. Um, remember, this guy lived at a time where there were some relatively large uh, sauropods, and so, um, uh, certainly he would have had a much greater chance of killing one of them uh, with a group than by himself. Okay, Cassandra from Dehennis, Texas. Dehennis is right down the road from where I grew up. I've got a lot of good friends there. Uh, so hello, Cassandra, how are you? She wrote and asked, hey, Dinosaur George, how was your summer? Cassandra, this is really a nice email. I get these all the time and I appreciate it. I, you don't wanna know anything about dinosaurs? I think that's cool. I think it's incredibly polite to simply ask me how my summer was. But let me tell you, Cassandra, my summer was great. Uh, I've been very, very busy. I'm working on all kinds of neat projects. I've had some chances to go out and identify some dinosaur footprints, which was cool. I did a little fossil hunting. I did a lot of fishing. Um, and I did a lot of relaxation. So it was great. I hope your summer was good. And uh, I know school's starting back up, so I hope you have a great school year. And by the way, um, one of my favorite places to eat is at Bill and Rosa's out there in Dehenna. So maybe someday I'll sneak out there and have lunch and I'll run into you and your family. Okay, and then Eric from Aloha, Oregon. Well, Aloha, uh, Eric. Um, he writes, what is my favorite dinosaur? My favorite, ever since I was a little kid, Eric, has always been Allosaurus. Uh, it's just my favorite dinosaur. When I was a little kid, I got some dinosaur toys and there was an Allosaurus toy in the box that just looked so cool. And so that's the dinosaur I absolutely fell in love with. So that is my all-time favorite. Write me back, Eric, and tell me who your favorite dinosaur was. And if any of you ever want to tell me your favorite dinosaur, prehistoric creature, I'd love to hear from you. Go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, and I will certainly get your questions. But let me remind you, I get thousands of questions every month from people from all over the world, and I just cannot possibly answer them all. I try. And uh, a word of advice, when you send me a question, try to keep it kind of short because sometimes if I get a question that literally is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of words, I just can't even read the whole thing because I just don't have time. So if you've written to me and, and I haven't responded, I am so sorry, I just, I try my best. All right, uh, listen, you guys have a great day. For those of you that are back into school, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. For you little guys out there, you make sure and practice your manners, practice your reading, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you all soon. Take care, everybody. I'll see you.